Have you ever wondered what life was like in ancient Greece? It's a question that sparks curiosity in our minds. Ancient Greece, a civilization of immense historical significance, offers us a glimpse into a world far removed from our own. Understanding history is not just about knowing dates and events, it's about understanding our ancestors, their daily routines, their culture, and their society. So let's delve into the fascinating world of ancient Greece and discover how they lived their lives. Imagine waking up to the rooster's crow with the sun rising over the beautiful landscapes of Greece. In the serene dawning hours, an ordinary citizen in ancient Greece would rise from their humble straw bed, their day commencing with the first light of Helios, the sun god. Their morning ablutions were simple yet sacred as cleanliness was highly valued. A quick dip in the nearby river or a basin wash at home followed by a light breakfast often a chunk of barley bread or a handful of olives, and they were ready to face the day. Work in ancient Greece wasn't just a means of survival, but a way of life, an integral part of their identity. The men would head to the fields, their muscles straining under the weight of plows and hoes, or to the bustling agora, the marketplace, engaging in a world of trade and politics. The women, the backbone of the household, would manage a myriad of chores, from grinding grains, weaving cloth, to caring for the children. As the day wore on, it was time for the main meal, a midday feast. A spread of cheese, fruits, vegetables, and sometimes fish or meat washed down with a cup of wine diluted with water would grace the table. This was not just a meal, but a time of bonding and conversation, a sharing of ideas and experiences. Recreation played a crucial role in the lives of ancient Greeks. The afternoons were often spent in the gymnasium where men would partake in physical exercises while the women gathered at the loom, their hands skillfully creating intricate patterns. The children, their laughter echoing in the air, would engage in various games. Their innocent play a reflection of the society's emphasis on physical and intellectual development. As the sun sets, the cool evening breeze carrying the aroma of the sea, it was time for a smaller meal often leftovers from the midday feast. The household would gather around the hearth, sharing stories and lessons from the day, their voices a symphony against the backdrop of the crackling fire. As the sun sets, families gather around for their evening meal, concluding another day in ancient Greece. Scene script, culture, the lifeblood of any civilization was no less vibrant in ancient Greece. A nation's pulse can be felt through its culture, and ancient Greece was a civilization that throbbed with life. The Greeks were innovators in various fields, their contributions to art, literature and music forming a rich tapestry that still influences the world today. Art was a vital part of ancient Greek culture, a mirror reflecting their society, their beliefs and their ideals. Sculpture was their forte with marble and bronze coming to life under the hands of their artists. These sculptures weren't just lifeless pieces of stone or metal. They were the embodiment of Greek ideals capturing the essence of their gods, heroes and citizens. Phidias, Praxiteles and Myron were some of the luminaries in this field, their works still admired centuries later. The Greeks also excelled in pottery, their vases and amphorae adorned with scenes from mythology and everyday life. These served not only as decorative pieces but also as historical records providing us with a glimpse into the world they lived in. Literature was another sphere where the Greeks left an indelible mark. Their epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey, penned by the blind poet Homer, are considered the bedrock of Western literature. These tales of gods, heroes and monsters have been told and retold, their themes resonating across the ages. The Greeks were also pioneers in the field of drama, giving birth to both tragedy and comedy as we know them today. Playwrights such as Sophocles, Euripides and Aristophanes used the stage as a platform to explore complex human emotions and societal issues. Their work still performed and studied in the present day. Philosophy too was a key part of Greek culture. The contributions of Socrates, Plato and Aristotle to philosophy are immeasurable, their ideas shaping the way we understand the world and our place in it. They dared to question, to explore, and to think their intellectual curiosity, setting the foundation for the scientific method. Music was integral to the Greeks, intertwined with their religious rites, theatrical performances, and daily life. 
While their musical compositions may not have survived, their influence is evident in the musical scales and modes we use today. The Greeks believed that a well-rounded individual should excel in both body and mind. This belief gave birth to the Olympic Games, a celebration of physical prowess and competitive spirit that continues to this day. The culture of ancient Greece was a vibrant one, full of creativity and innovation. Their art, literature, music and philosophy were the expressions of a society that valued knowledge, beauty and the human spirit. Indeed, the echo of ancient Greek culture still reverberates in our world today. The echoes of their music, the words of their philosophers, the beauty of their art and the spirit of their literature continue to inspire and influence. They serve as a testament to a civilization that, though long gone, continues to live on in its cultural legacy. Society in ancient Greece was a complex structure built on certain key pillars. Let's delve into this intricate web, starting with the social structure. In the heart of this society, we find a hierarchy. At the top were the free, land-owning, native-born men, also known as citizens. These citizens were the only members of society who held political power. In fact, ancient Greece is renowned for being the birthplace of democracy. Yes, democracy, a concept so elemental to our modern societies, was conceived in the minds of these ancient Greeks. Citizens would gather in the Agora, the heart of the city-state, to discuss and vote on important matters. This practice was known as a direct democracy, where each citizen had a voice. However, it's important to note that this each was a select few, excluding women, slaves and foreigners, ah, the women of ancient Greece. They were often confined to the home, their roles centered around managing the household and raising children. However, they were far from insignificant. They played crucial roles in religious rituals and were celebrated in myth and literature. Spartan women, in particular, enjoyed more freedoms and rights compared to their counterparts in other city-states. Then there were the slaves, a significant yet oppressed group in ancient Greek society. Slaves were considered property and their roles varied from household chores to more skilled labor in fields like teaching and crafts. Despite their lack of freedom, it's interesting to note that education was not entirely off limits for them. Some slaves were indeed educated, especially those who served in roles like tutors and artisans. Lastly, we have the metics, foreigners who chose to live in Greece. They were free but lacked political rights. Metics were often traders or artisans contributing economically to Greek society. Now let's consider the significance of these roles. The very existence of democracy in this ancient society, albeit limited, displays their respect for individual voice and collective decision making. The role of women, while constrained, reveals their value in maintaining cultural and religious traditions. The existence of slaves and metics, on the other hand, demonstrates the societal and economic complexities that were already present in those times. It's fascinating to see how these social structures and roles were intertwined, each contributing to the function and progression of Greek society. Despite the disparities and inequalities, every group had a role to play, a cog in the larger machinery of civilization. This ancient society with its citizens, women, slaves and metics tells us a lot about the Greeks' values and beliefs. They treasured democracy and valued contribution, but they also tolerated social inequality. Yet it's this very complexity and these contradictions that make ancient Greece an intriguing subject of study. Despite its complexity, Greek society was a reflection of their values and beliefs. It's a testament to the fact that societies, no matter how ancient, are always a mirror of the times and the people that constitute them. The ancient Greeks were deeply religious with a pantheon of gods and goddesses. Let's delve into the mesmerizing world of their beliefs and customs. The Greeks believed in a multitude of deities, each with a distinct realm of influence. From Zeus, the king of gods, to Aphrodite, the goddess of love, these divine figures were integral to the Greeks' understanding of the world around them. They believed that their gods were involved in every aspect of their lives, from the success of their crops to the outcomes of battles. Rituals and sacrifices were common practice meant to appease the gods and earn their favor. These were often performed at home, in temples or at public altars. The Greeks believed that by honoring the gods through these rituals, they could ensure prosperity and ward off misfortune. Religion was not just a personal matter for the Greeks, it was woven into the very fabric of their society. 
Festivals, for instance, were significant events that brought communities together in celebration of their gods. One of the most famous of these was the Olympic Games, held in honor of Zeus. These games were not just a display of athletic prowess, but a religious event of great importance. The role of religion extended beyond festivals and rituals. It influenced their laws, their philosophy, their art, and even their understanding of morality. The gods were their guides, providing them with a moral compass and a framework for understanding the world. Religion also played a crucial role in matters of state. Major decisions such as going to war or forging alliances were often influenced by religious considerations. The Oracle of Delphi, for instance, was consulted for divine guidance before any major undertaking. Religion in ancient Greece was complex and multifaceted, permeating every aspect of daily life and societal function. The Greeks saw their gods in everything, from the changing of the seasons to the fall of a single leaf. Religion was an integral part of life in ancient Greece, guiding their actions and shaping their worldview. Ancient Greece, though long gone, has left an indelible mark on human history. Let's delve into the legacy of this remarkable civilization. A civilization that was not just about great warriors or mythical gods, but one that laid the foundations for many of our modern concepts and practices in areas as diverse as philosophy, arts, politics and science. In the realm of philosophy, the Greeks were pioneers. Thinkers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle dared to question the nature of the world and our place in it. They explored ideas about morality, truth, justice and beauty. Their philosophical inquiries were not confined to abstract thought, but were deeply intertwined with everyday life. Today we continue to grapple with many of the same questions they posed, their works forming the bedrock of Western philosophy. Moving on to the arts, the Greeks were true masters. Their sculptures, architecture and plays were not just aesthetically pleasing, but also served to express deep human emotions and experiences. Theatrical performances in ancient Greece were not merely entertainment. They were communal events that explored themes such as love, loss, pride and the abuse of power. Our modern theatres, dramas and even Hollywood movies owe much to these early Greek storytellers. In the sphere of politics, the Greeks gifted us with the concept of democracy. The city-state of Athens in particular was where every free male citizen had a voice in the political process, an idea that was revolutionary for its time. This democratic principle, though it has evolved and been refined over the centuries, remains at the heart of many of today's political systems. Lastly, let's not forget the contributions of ancient Greece to science. Greek philosophers and scientists like Pythagoras, Euclid and Hippocrates made groundbreaking advancements in mathematics, geometry and medicine. They sought to understand the world not through myth and superstition, but through observation, hypothesis and logical reasoning. This scientific method, though refined, is still the basis of how we approach scientific inquiry today. Every field we've discussed, philosophy, arts, politics, science, they all bear the unmistakable imprint of ancient Greece. This civilization, though it existed thousands of years ago, has shaped our world in ways that are profound and enduring. The flame of ancient Greece continues to burn brightly, illuminating our path forward. And thus we journeyed through the fascinating world of ancient Greece. We've walked through the cobbled streets of Athens, experienced the hustle and bustle of the Agora, and felt the pulse of a civilization that was so rich in culture, knowledge and innovation. We've explored the daily routines of ancient Greeks, from the break of dawn when they began their day, to the setting of the sun when they retreated to their abodes. Their lives were an intricate blend of work, leisure and intellectual pursuits. We've delved into their vibrant culture, a tapestry woven with threads of art, philosophy, sports and theatre. The Greeks, ever the connoisseurs of beauty and wisdom, left an indelible mark on the world with their contributions to literature, architecture and science. We've examined the pillars of their society, a complex structure of democracy, citizenship and social classes. The Greeks were pioneers in establishing democratic principles and social norms that continue to echo in our societies today. We've pondered upon their religion and beliefs, a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each with their unique stories and powers. Their faith, 
shaped their lives, their values, and their understanding of the world and the universe. As we traced the legacy of ancient Greece, we found its imprints everywhere, from the foundations of Western philosophy to the ideals of democracy, from the beauty of classical art to the thrill of the Olympic Games. Understanding history is not merely about unearthing the past, it's about connecting the dots between then and now. It's about understanding how the thoughts, actions and lives of those who came before us have shaped the world we live in today. And there's no better example of this than ancient Greece, a civilization that was ahead of its time and yet so intrinsically a part of our present. As we close this chapter of history, we carry with us the wisdom and legacy of ancient Greece, a civilization that continues to shape our world. Deep within the annals of history lie tales of grandeur, heroism and mystery. Today we journey back in time to uncover the rise of ancient cities. In the vast tapestry of human civilization there are threads that shine brighter, stories that echo louder and mysteries that intrigue deeper. These are the tales of ancient cities, citadels of time, that have left an indelible mark on the sands of history. As we delve into this journey, we will traverse through time, peeling back the layers of the past, to bring you the captivating narratives of Pompeii, Troy, and Machu Picchu. Our first stop on this historical odyssey is Pompeii, a city etched in time, preserved under a blanket of volcanic ash. Next, we journey to the ancient city of Troy, a city whose legends have been immortalized in epic poetry and whose walls have borne witness to heroism and great battles. And finally, we ascend into the clouds to the lost city of the Incas, Machu Picchu, a city that redefines the very limits of human imagination and architectural prowess. Each city, unique in its genesis, its journey and its legacy, holds a treasure trove of stories waiting to be unearthed. Stories of courage and conquest, of innovation and ingenuity, of art and architecture, of culture and civilization. These are not mere stories, but rather, they are the milestones in the journey of humanity, the signposts that have guided us from our primitive beginnings to the modern world we inhabit today. As we embark on this journey, we will not only explore the physical structures that these cities are known for, but we will also delve into the minds of the people who built them, who lived in them, and who left their indelible mark on them. We will weave together the threads of history, archaeology, mythology and culture to paint a vivid picture of these ancient cities and their enduring legacies. So brace yourselves as we set out on our journey, starting with the city frozen in time, Pompeii. Buried under the wrath of Mount Vesuvius, Pompeii was a city rich in culture and commerce. Let's step back in time to an era when the ancient city of Pompeii was in its prime, a thriving metropolis, bustling with life and activity. Nestled in the fertile region of Campania, near the Bay of Naples, Pompeii was a beacon of civilization and prosperity. Its strategic location made it an important trading hub, connecting the Mediterranean with the hinterlands of Italy. Its seaport was a hive of activity, with goods from as far as Africa and the Middle East finding their way into the heart of the city. Pompeii was a city of contrasts, where Roman architectural prowess met the simplicity of provincial life. Its streets were lined with grand villas, ornate temples, bustling markets and impressive public buildings. The grandeur of the city was evident in its well-planned grid system, intricate mosaics and frescoes that adorned the walls of its buildings. The city's amphitheatre, one of the oldest surviving Roman amphitheatres, was a testament to its cultural vitality. But it wasn't just the physical structures that made Pompeii special. The city was a melting pot of cultures boasting a cosmopolitan lifestyle. Its citizens, known as Pompeians, were a mix of affluent merchants, skilled craftsmen, farmers, slaves and freedmen. They reveled in the city's social and cultural offerings from theatrical performances and gladiatorial combats to public baths and sumptuous feasts. The city's economy was as diverse as its people. Agriculture was the backbone with the fertile plains around Pompeii producing an abundance of grains, fruits, olives and fine wines. These products were not only consumed locally but also exported across the empire, earning Pompeii a reputation as a vital agricultural hub. Pompeii's prosperity wasn't just confined to its agriculture. Its flourishing trade and commerce were evident in its bustling markets, where goods from far and wide were bought and sold. 
The city's artisans were renowned for their skills, crafting beautiful objects in bronze, silver and gold. The city was also known for its wool and textile industry, producing fine garments that were in high demand throughout the Roman Empire. The city's infrastructure was highly advanced for its time. Pompeii boasted a sophisticated water system with aqueducts bringing fresh water from miles away. Its streets were paved with stepping stones for pedestrians to avoid the muck of the roads. The city also had a complex sanitation system with drains and sewers to keep the city clean. The prosperous city of Pompeii, however, was not destined to last, meeting its tragic end in 79 AD. Yet, the story of Pompeii's rise offers us a glimpse into the past, a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of human civilization. It's a poignant reminder of how cities can rise, thrive and fall, leaving behind a legacy that continues to fascinate us centuries later. From the ashes of Pompeii, we journey to the legendary city of Troy, a city whose existence was once thought to be mere myth. Nestled near the Dardanelles Strait, Troy's strategic location was its strength and its curse. The city stood as a gateway between the East and West, reaping the benefits of trade and cultural exchange. Yet its coveted position also made it a desirable prize for ambitious conquerors. The origins of Troy take us back to the dawn of civilization. Founded by the descendants of the Hittites, this Bronze Age city became a bustling metropolis. Its towering walls and fortified citadel were a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of its inhabitants. But Troy was more than just stone and mortar. It was a beacon of hope, a symbol of human endeavor. Troy's moment of glory, however, was etched in the annals of history during the Trojan War, a saga immortalized in Homer's Iliad. The epic recounts a decade-long conflict ignited by the abduction of the beautiful Helen by Paris, the Prince of Troy. This act of passion sparked a war that would consume the known world. The Greeks, led by King Agamemnon and the legendary hero Achilles, besieged the city for ten long years. The war concluded with the infamous Trojan horse ploy, a subterfuge that led to the city's downfall. These tales, passed down through generations, were considered mere legends, the fanciful creations of ancient bards. That was until the 19th century when the city's ruins were unearthed by the pioneering archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann. Schliemann's discoveries provided tangible proof of Troy's existence, forever blurring the lines between myth and history. The walls of Troy stood silent witnesses to the past, their stones whispering tales of love, war and fate. In the heart of the city, the remnants of the royal palace, the scene of many an epic tale, were unearthed. These archaeological findings, coupled with the discovery of a treasure trove of artifacts, lent credence to the epic tales narrated in the Iliad, reinforcing the city's historical significance. The city of Troy, though reduced to ruins, stands as a monument to the power of human imagination and the indomitable spirit of survival. It is more than an archaeological site. It is a symbol of our collective past, a tapestry of human experience woven with threads of triumph, tragedy, love and loss. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Troy, we find ourselves drawn into a world that, though separated by millennia, resonates with our own. Troy's story is our story, a testament to the enduring power of human resilience and the timeless allure of legend. The city of Troy, though fallen, lives on in our hearts and minds, a testament to the power of legend and history. Leaving behind the battlegrounds of Troy, we ascend to the cloud-kissed peaks of the Andes, to the lost city of Machu Picchu. This gem of history, nestled high in the Peruvian Andes, was unknown to the outside world until the early 20th century. Hidden beneath the cloak of thick vegetation and shrouded in mist, it lay undisturbed, a silent sentinel guarding the secrets of a once mighty empire. It was in the year 1911 that an American explorer by the name of Hiram Bingham stumbled upon this architectural masterpiece. Bingham had been on an expedition searching for the fabled city of Vilcabamba, believed to be the last refuge of the Inca resistance against Spanish invasion. What he discovered instead was a city of stone perched precariously on a ridge between two towering Andean peaks. The city is a marvel of ancient engineering. Its buildings, terraces and plazas are intricately carved out of the mountain itself, a testament to the genius and skill of its Inca builders. 
The city's structures are constructed from dry stone walls, fit together so perfectly that not even a blade of grass can slip between the stones. Its terraced fields, once used for agriculture, cascade down the mountainside, a testament to the Incas' mastery of their harsh and rugged environment. But despite its grandeur, Machu Picchu remains an enigma. Its isolation, far removed from other Inca settlements, has led to much speculation about its purpose. Some believe it to have been a royal estate, a retreat for Inca nobility. Others theorize it was a ceremonial site, a sacred place for the worship of Inca deities. But the truth remains elusive. Just as mysterious is the city's abandonment, it's believed that the city was deserted around the time of the Spanish conquest. However, the conquistadors in their relentless pursuit of gold never found Machu Picchu. The city remained untouched, its secrets safe. Was it a plague, a rebellion, or simply the collapse of the Inca empire that led to its downfall? The answers are as elusive as the morning mists that swirl around its peaks. Machu Picchu, a city lost and found, continues to intrigue and inspire us with its enigmatic past. Despite the centuries that have passed, it stands as a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of a people who, against all odds, carved a city out of a mountain and created an architectural marvel that continues to captivate the world. As we delve deeper into its mysteries, we are left with more questions than answers. A reminder that the past is never truly lost, but waiting to be rediscovered. These ancient cities, though buried by time and nature, continue to echo in our present. Their stories, though shrouded in mystery and legend, carry lessons that remain relevant even today. Pompeii, with its well-preserved remnants, provides us with a snapshot of Roman life frozen in time. Its bustling streets, grand villas and elaborate mosaics continue to captivate us, offering glimpses into a society that was both complex and vibrant. The city's sudden demise serves as a stark reminder of nature's unpredictable power, a lesson that resonates with our modern understanding of natural disasters and their impact on urban spaces. The tale of Troy, immortalized by Homer's epic, the Iliad, has stirred imaginations for millennia. The city's legendary walls and fortifications, said to have withstood a decade-long siege, have greatly influenced military architecture throughout history. The story of Troy also underscores the influential role of narrative and myth in shaping our understanding of history. Machu Picchu, perched high in the Andes, stands as a testament to the Incan civilization's remarkable architectural prowess and understanding of nature. Its intricate city planning, terraced farming and advanced water distribution systems reveal a society that lived in harmony with its environment. This ancient city's complex urban design continues to inspire sustainable practices in modern architecture and urban planning. These cities, each unique in their rise and fall, have left an indelible mark on our cultural consciousness. Their architectural innovations, societal structures, and their resilience in the face of adversity continue to shape our understanding of human civilization. They remind us that cities are more than mere structures of stone and mortar, they are living, breathing entities, repositories of our collective memory. As we journey through the annals of time, we realize that the past, though silent, speaks volumes. And so, until our next historical adventure, we bid these ancient cities adieu. Ever wondered how a small city-state on the banks of the Tiber River became one of the greatest empires in history? You've probably heard the name Rome thrown around in history classes, or maybe you've seen grand depictions of Roman soldiers in movies. But the real story of Rome, its roots and its rise, is far more intricate and fascinating. Let's rewind to the 8th century BC. A tale as old as time tells us of twin brothers, Romulus and Remus, abandoned and raised by a she-wolf. They grew up to build a city, but sibling rivalry turned fatal. Romulus emerged as the sole ruler, and this city took his name. Rome, a humble beginning for what would become a colossal empire. Rome started as a monarchy, but the Romans didn't take kindly to kingly rule. The last of their kings, Tarquinius Superbus, was overthrown and Rome became a republic in the 5th century BC. It was a bold experiment, a new form of government where power rested not with a single ruler, but with the people and their elected officials. The Roman Senate, a council of elders, was the heart of this republic. It wasn't a perfect democracy by our standards, but it was revolutionary for its time. 
The senators, drawn from Rome's elite, held sway over matters of state, from foreign policy to public finances. Roman law, too, played a pivotal role in the shaping of the Republic. The Twelve Tables, Rome's first code of law, laid the groundwork for a legal system that prized fairness, a system that still influences our laws today. But what set Rome apart was its resilience. It wasn't merely a city of laws and governance, but a city of warriors. From the ashes of defeat, Rome rose stronger and more determined. Its armies grew, its territories expanded, and soon this city-state became a force to be reckoned with. But as Rome grew, so too did its ambitions, setting the stage for an era of unprecedented expansion. As we'll see, the dawn of Rome was just the beginning of a story that would span centuries. A story of triumph, turmoil, and the indomitable spirit of an empire. As the Republic matured, Rome began to flex its military might. A period of expansion was ignited, marked by a series of conflicts known as the Punic Wars, a pivotal moment in Roman history. These wars were a titanic struggle between Rome and Carthage, two of the Mediterranean's most formidable powers. The First Punic War erupted over control of Sicily, a fertile island at the foot of the Italian peninsula. After more than 20 years of fighting, Rome emerged victorious, signaling the start of its territorial expansion. The Second Punic War is perhaps the most famous, remembered for the audacious Carthaginian general Hannibal, who dared to cross the Alps with his army and war elephants. Despite his initial successes, Rome would ultimately triumph again. The Third Punic War was the final nail in Carthage's coffin. Rome, now a dominant force, it completely destroyed the city and established its undisputed control over the Mediterranean. This era of conquest extended Rome's reach from the sandy borders of Egypt to the misty shores of Britannia, transforming it from a republic into an empire. During this time, Rome produced several notable generals, but none more famous than Julius Caesar. A man of ambition and cunning, Caesar expanded Rome's territories in Gaul, winning military glory and the unwavering loyalty of his legions. His crossing of the Rubicon River, a direct challenge to the Roman Senate, marked a turning point in history. It was a daring act of defiance, one that ignited a civil war and led to the end of the Roman Republic. But with every story of triumph, there's a shadow. Rome's rapid expansion and the increasing power of its generals began to strain the fabric of the Republic. The Senate struggled to maintain control as generals, backed by their loyal armies, jockeyed for power. The wealth and slaves brought back from conquered lands led to economic imbalance and social unrest. But with great power came great tension and the Republic was soon teetering on the brink of collapse. The Republic was dying, and from its ashes, an empire was born. As the Roman Republic expanded, its political structure strained under the weight of its conquests. Tensions brewed between the Senate, the traditional ruling body of Rome, and the increasingly powerful generals returning from the front lines, their legions loyal not to the state, but to their commanders. This tension sparked a series of civil wars as these generals vied for control of Rome itself. One of these generals was Julius Caesar, a charismatic leader and a cunning strategist. His campaigns in Gaul, modern-day France, had expanded Rome's territories and his reputation, yet his power and influence threatened the Senate. In a bid to curb his ascending trajectory, they ordered him to disband his army and return to Rome. But Caesar had other plans. In a move that shook the Republic, he crossed the Rubicon River with his army, a direct challenge to the Senate. The resulting civil war would change the course of Roman history. However, Caesar's reign was cut short. The Ides of March, a date now synonymous with betrayal, saw Caesar assassinated in the Senate by those who feared his growing power. Yet the conspirators had miscalculated. Instead of restoring the Republic, they had only plunged Rome into another round of civil wars. From this chaos emerged Augustus, Caesar's adopted heir. A master of political maneuvering, he outmaneuvered his rivals, gradually accumulating power. In the Battle of Actium, he defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra, leaving him the unchallenged ruler of Rome. In 27 BC, he took the title of Emperor, marking the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. Augustus ushered in a period of relative peace and stability known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. He expanded Rome's borders, improved its infrastructure, and championed the arts. His rule set the blueprint for future emperors, and under his guidance, Rome flourished. 
With the dawn of the empire, Rome was poised to reach new heights of power and influence. The Roman Empire reached its zenith, an era of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana. This golden age, spanning from the rule of Augustus in the first century BC to the death of Marcus Aurelius in the late second century AD, was a period of unprecedented stability and prosperity. The empire at its height stretched from the sun-drenched hills of Hispania in the west to the windswept steppes of Parthia in the east. During this era, the empire was a beacon of civilization, illuminating the world with its remarkable achievements. The Romans, being master engineers, pioneered advancements in architecture. The awe-inspiring Colosseum, the majestic Pantheon, and the intricate aqueducts stand testament to their architectural prowess. These grand structures not only serve functional purposes, but also symbolize the might and wealth of the empire. But the empire was not just about grandeur and spectacle, it was also a crucible for intellectual growth. The Golden Age saw an outpouring of literature and philosophy. Great minds like Virgil, Horace and Ovid penned epic poems, satires and love elegies that continue to be studied and admired to this day. Stoicism, a philosophy promoting virtue and wisdom, flourished. With the Emperor Marcus Aurelius himself being a prominent Stoic philosopher, the Romans were also adept lawmakers and their legal system forms the bedrock of many modern legal codes. They developed the concept of innocent until proven guilty and the right to a fair trial. Laws were codified and made publicly available, leading to a more equitable society. This era of peace and prosperity allowed the empire to thrive, yet it was not to last. Change as it does came inevitably and inexorably. The empire, even at its most glorious, was not immune to the ravages of time and the whims of fate. But even golden ages must end and the empire soon found itself facing a series of crises the empire, once invincible, was beginning to crumble. The third century brought with it a storm of problems that shook the Roman Empire to its very core. The once mighty empire found itself besieged by internal struggles and external threats with political corruption, economic troubles and military challenges delivering blow after blow. In the heart of the empire, the political landscape was riddled with corruption. The Senate, once a beacon of Roman authority and wisdom, had become a cesspool of bribery and manipulation. Emperors were no longer chosen for their leadership skills or military prowess, but by whoever could outbid their rivals, leading to a rapid succession of inept rulers. Economically, the empire was in a state of freefall. The vast territorial expansion had stretched the empire's resources thin. Moreover, rampant inflation, driven by the empire's incessant coin minting, caused the value of the Roman currency to plummet, leading to severe economic instability. The common people bearing the brunt of these economic woes were pushed into poverty and hardship. And then there were the military challenges. The empire's legions, once the pride of Rome, were being pressurized from all sides. The frontier was constantly under attack from Germanic tribes and Persian forces. The once invincible legions were now stretched thin, struggling to keep the empire's borders intact. The empire's military was further weakened by the internal power struggles. The endless political machinations and civil wars drained the military's resources and morale. Soldiers were more loyal to their generals who could offer them spoils of war rather than the empire itself. In essence, the empire was a giant teetering on the brink staggering under the weight of its own greatness. The political corruption, economic troubles, and military challenges of the third century had left the empire in a precarious state. The empire was on a knife edge, teetering between recovery and collapse. The question that loomed large was, could the empire rise again from the ashes of its own crisis, or was this the beginning of the end? The Roman Empire, a beacon of civilization for centuries, was on its last legs. The grandeur that was Rome, the empire that ruled an expanse of the known world, was about to meet its inevitable end. The empire's decline was not sudden or abrupt. It was rather a slow, agonizing process, punctuated by brief periods of seeming recovery and false hopes. One of the major contributing factors to this decline was the relentless invasions by barbarian tribes. The Visigoths, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, they all played their part in chipping away at the once mighty empire's strength and resolve. 
But the empire didn't just crumble from without, it was also crumbling from within. The empire had grown too large, too unwieldy. It was split into two halves, the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire, an attempt to make administration easier. But this division only served to weaken the empire further, creating rifts and tensions that would prove to be fatal. In the West, Rome, the heart of the empire was losing its grip. The once flourishing city was now a shadow of its former self. The Roman legions, once the pride of the empire, were increasingly filled with non-Romans, their loyalty to the empire questionable at best. And then it happened. In the year 476, the last Roman emperor, a boy named Romulus Augustus, was deposed by a Germanic chieftain. The Western Roman Empire, the dazzling beacon of civilization, had fallen. But in the East, the empire lived on, transforming into what would become the Byzantine Empire, preserving much of the Roman traditions and knowledge. Yet the glory of Rome was no more. And so the sun set on the Roman Empire, but its legacy would endure for millennia to come. The Roman Empire may have fallen, but its influence, its impact on the world, that is something that time could never erase. The Roman Empire was no more, but its influence was far from over. Like the phoenix of their own mythology, it rose from its ashes, not in physical form, but in the enduring legacy it left behind. A legacy that touches our lives even today in ways we may not fully comprehend. Consider our systems of law. So much of the legal framework we take for granted today has its roots in Roman jurisprudence. The very concept of innocent until proven guilty, a cornerstone of modern justice, was a Roman innovation. The idea that laws should be written and accessible to all. Another gift from the Romans, then we have architecture. The Romans were master builders, their structures a testament to their ingenuity and ambition. The aqueducts, the amphitheaters, the baths, all these structures, some of which stand till this day, were Roman marvels. The dome, a ubiquitous feature in modern architecture, was a Roman invention. So every time you marvel at a grand cathedral or a stately capital building, remember you're seeing the legacy of Rome. Language too carries the imprint of Rome. Latin, the language of the Romans, is the mother of the Romance languages. French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian. But its influence goes beyond these, permeating English and other languages with thousands of words and phrases. And let's not forget government. The concept of a republic, a state in which supreme power is held by the people and their elected representatives, was a Roman brainchild. It's a form of government that has stood the test of time, adopted by nations across the globe. The Roman Empire may have fallen, but it never truly died. It transformed, it evolved, it permeated the fabric of our world. Its legacy is present in our laws, our buildings, our words and our governments. It lives on in the world we know today. Have you ever wondered what secrets lie buried beneath our feet, deep within the sands of time? Welcome to a world that exists beyond the margins of history books, where the boundaries of myth and reality blur. We are about to embark on a journey into the enigma of lost civilizations. These are places of legend and lore, their stories etched onto the canvas of time, only to be wiped away by the relentless march of progress. They are whispers of the past that echo in the hushed corners of our collective memory, civilizations that once flourished, only to vanish without a trace. Imagine colossal cities, architectural marvels, and societies teeming with life, thriving in the harshest of environments. From the jungles of South America to the deserts of Africa, from the cliffs of the Mediterranean to the mountains of Asia, these civilizations emerged, persisted, and then mysteriously disappeared, leaving behind only fragments of their once vibrant existence. We'll explore the enigma of the lost city of Atlantis, a civilization so advanced it was said to rival the gods. We'll delve into the masters of the jungle, builders of vast cities swallowed by the green sea of the Amazon. We'll climb with the builders of the cliffs, whose settlements still cling to the precipices of the Mediterranean. We'll trace the footsteps of the first Europeans, whose culture was swept away by the ice. We'll stand in awe of the temple builders, whose monuments have outlasted their creators. We'll follow the peaceful people, who left no record of war. We'll uncover the first Mesoamericans, whose innovative societies shaped the course of an entire continent. We'll sift through the sands with the carvers of the desert, whose artistry was etched onto the very landscape. 
and finally we'll journey to the dawn of Western civilization with the first Greeks, whose influence can still be felt today. These are the civilizations that time forgot, their stories untold, their mysteries unsolved. But as we journey into the shadows of the past, we may yet uncover the secrets they hold, so join us as we journey back in time to explore these ancient civilizations that vanished without a trace. Plato's tale of a powerful and advanced civilization sinking into the sea overnight is perhaps one of the most captivating in history. This tale, of course, is the legendary city of Atlantis, an enigma that has intrigued historians and archaeologists for centuries. The city of Atlantis, as described by Plato in his dialogues Timaeus and Critias, was said to be a utopia of unparalleled technological and cultural advancements. A city-state with formidable naval power, it was said to be larger than Asia and Libya combined. Plato painted a vivid picture of a society that was rich in gold, silver, and an abundance of exotic wildlife. The Atlanteans were reportedly advanced in science, agriculture, architecture, and warfare making them a civilization far ahead of their time. But where was Atlantis located? That's where the story gets even more intriguing. While some believe that it was situated beyond the Pillars of Hercules, what we now know as the Strait of Gibraltar, others propose that it could have been anywhere from the Caribbean to the Greek islands, the North Sea or even Antarctica. The exact location of Atlantis remains one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries. The tale takes a dark turn with the sudden disappearance of Atlantis. According to Plato, after failing to invade Athens, the Atlanteans fell out of favor with the gods. In a single day and night, violent earthquakes and floods consumed the city, causing it to sink into the sea, never to be seen again. This dramatic end has led to numerous theories, from a massive tsunami to a volcanic eruption or even a meteor strike. Despite extensive research and countless expeditions, no concrete evidence of Atlantis has ever been found. The city's existence and subsequent disappearance continue to be subjects of heated debate among historians, archaeologists and philosophers. Though we may never know the truth, the legend of Atlantis continues to captivate us. It serves as a reminder of the power of storytelling, the allure of mystery, and our enduring fascination with the unknown. Deep within the jungles of Central America, a civilization rose and fell, leaving behind only their magnificent temples. This is the story of the Mayans, the masters of the jungle. The Mayans were not just an ancient civilization, they were a power that ruled the jungles, the skies, and the stars. They were astronomers of the first order, mathematicians of the highest caliber, and their knowledge of these disciplines was unparalleled in their time. The Mayans were a civilization ahead of their time, developing a complex calendar system that could predict celestial events with astonishing accuracy. They charted the movements of the stars, the moon and the planets, and integrated their findings into their religious beliefs and everyday life. They built observatories, not unlike modern ones, where they could study the heavens and keep track of time. Their mathematical prowess was equally remarkable. They were among the first civilizations to understand the concept of zero, a mathematical breakthrough that would later pave the way for advancements in algebra and calculus. They used this knowledge to create architectural wonders, many of which still stand today as a testament to their ingenuity. But like all great civilizations, the Mayans too met their end. Theories about their sudden disappearance are as numerous as the stars they once studied. Some believe it was due to overpopulation and the subsequent strain on resources. Others suggest it was warfare, disease or a combination of both. There are those who theorize that a prolonged drought led to their downfall. Yet despite their disappearance, the Mayans did not fade into oblivion. Their legacy lives on in the magnificent temples they left behind, in the complex calendar system that continues to amaze scholars, and in the remnants of their vibrant culture that still echo in the jungles of Central America. The Mayans, a civilization that flourished and faded, yet their legacy lives on. Their story is a reminder of the transient nature of power and civilization, and of the enduring impact that knowledge and wisdom can have long after those who held them have gone. In the arid deserts of the American Southwest, we find remnants of a civilization that once thrived in these harsh conditions. The Anasazi, a name that means ancient ones in Navajo, were an enigmatic people who left behind a legacy etched into the cliff faces and canyons. 
From around the first century AD, the Anasazi carved their homes into the sandstone cliffs, creating extensive complexes of rooms, kivas, and storage spaces. These cliff dwellings, some of which are still remarkably intact today, reveal a society that was both innovative and resourceful. They mastered the art of dry farming, coaxing crops from the desert floor, and developed intricate systems of roads and trading networks. But the Anasazi were not just pragmatic builders and farmers, they also left behind a vibrant tapestry of art and culture. Petroglyphs, or rock carvings, adorn the cliff walls, depicting animals, people, and abstract symbols. The precise meanings of these images remain a mystery, but they offer tantalizing glimpses into the Anasazi's spiritual beliefs and everyday life. Yet around the end of the 13th century, the Anasazi abruptly abandoned their cliff homes. The reasons for their sudden departure are shrouded in mystery. Some theories suggest drought, warfare or social upheaval. Others propose more esoteric explanations like supernatural events or extraterrestrial involvement. But the truth may be more complex, a combination of factors that led this civilization to disperse and fade into the mists of time. Today, the Anasazi's descendants, the Pueblo peoples, carry on many of their ancient traditions, Yet they too are left with questions about their ancestors' sudden departure from the cliffs. The stories, theories and archaeological evidence provide pieces of the puzzle, but the complete picture remains elusive. As we delve into the shadows of these ancient cliff dwellings, we are drawn into a world of mystery and intrigue. The whispers of the past echo off the stone walls, hinting at stories untold, secrets kept, and a civilization that once thrived against the odds. The Anasazi, a civilization that vanished, leaving us with more questions than answers. On the island of Crete, the ruins of a civilization that was one of the first in Europe can still be seen. These are the remnants of the Minoan civilization, a society that thrived during the Bronze Age, around 4,000 years ago. The Minoans were pioneers of their time, showcasing a level of sophistication and advancement that was unparalleled in Europe during that period. Named after the legendary King Minos, the Minoans were renowned for their architectural prowess, exemplified by the sprawling palace complexes they built. Knossos, the most famous of these, was a labyrinthine marvel of engineering, complete with plumbing systems and vibrant frescoes that depicted scenes of their daily life and religious rituals. The Minoans were also a seafaring people. Their merchant ships traversed the Mediterranean, establishing trade routes and exchanging goods with Egypt and the Near East. This exposure to diverse cultures contributed to the Minoans' unique art and pottery style, characterized by naturalistic designs and marine motifs. Yet for all their achievements, the Minoans vanished from the annals of history. Theories abound as to what led to their downfall. Some point to a massive volcanic eruption on the nearby island of Thera, present-day Santorini. The cataclysmic event would have triggered tsunamis and a nuclear winter effect, devastating the Minoan civilization. Others suggest it was gradual decline due to economic instability or invasion by foreign powers. Despite their disappearance, the Minoans left an indelible mark on the tapestry of European history. Their architectural innovations served as a blueprint for the Mycenaean civilization, the first advanced civilization on mainland Greece. The Minoan script, Linear A, though still undeciphered, is a testament to their early adoption of written language. The Minoans, a civilization lost to time, yet their influence can still be felt. As we walk among the ruins of Knossos or gaze upon their vibrant frescoes, we are reminded of a society that was, in many ways, ahead of its time, a society that continues to fascinate us with its enigma and allure. In the heart of Cambodia, the ruins of a once grand empire still stand, a testament to its former glory. This was the Khmer Empire, a civilization that spanned over six centuries, from the 9th to the 15th centuries. The Khmer people were not just rulers, warriors and traders, but they were also remarkable builders. Their crowning achievement, Angkor Wat, still stands today as the largest religious monument in the world. Imagine the enormity of a construction project that took over 30 years to complete by an estimated 70,000 laborers. The temple was a complex of towers, bas-reliefs and galleries, all intricately carved and assembled. The highlight of the temple is the central sanctuary, which towers over 200 meters high, 
a symbol of the sacred Mount Meru, the center of the universe in Hindu cosmology. But how did this civilization, capable of such architectural marvels, meet its end? Theories abound. Some postulate it was due to changes in religious beliefs, as the empire shifted from Hinduism to Buddhism. This could have led to social instability and eventual collapse. Others suggest environmental factors like prolonged drought or over-exploitation of the land. There are also theories of invasion. In the late 14th century, the Thai kingdom of Ayutthaya started to gain power. The Khmer Empire, weakened by internal strife and environmental issues, could not withstand their assaults. By the 15th century, the empire was a shadow of its former self, its grand cities abandoned and its people scattered. The remnants of the Khmer Empire remind us of the transient nature of human civilizations. No matter how grand, how powerful, or how advanced, all empires have their sunset. Yet, in their decline, they leave behind indelible marks of their existence. The Khmer Empire, a civilization that built wonders only to fade into obscurity. In the plains of the Indus Valley, a civilization thrived that was remarkably advanced for its time. Imagine a society that, around 5,000 years ago, had already mastered the art of city planning with straight streets, uniform houses, and an intricate drainage system. This was the Indus Valley Civilization, an ancient society that blossomed in the fertile plains between the Indus and Sarasvati rivers. These people were not just builders, but also thinkers. Archaeologists have discovered seals with beautiful carvings and symbols, suggesting a rich cultural and possibly religious life. Their script, though yet to be deciphered, indicates a highly developed language system. They also had a strong sense of civic organization, as evidenced by their well-planned cities and sophisticated water management systems. But what is truly remarkable about the Indus Valley people was their peaceful nature. Unlike other ancient civilizations, there is little evidence of warfare or conquest. No grand tombs or monuments to mighty rulers have been found, nor weapons of mass destruction. Instead, the artifacts recovered suggest a society more interested in trade, agriculture and craftsmanship. Even their seals, while intricate, bear the images of animals and nature, not of gods or warriors. So what happened to these peaceful people? Theories abound. Some scholars suggest a major river changed its course, leading to a gradual decline in agriculture and eventual abandonment of the cities. Others propose that a massive earthquake or flood might have led to their sudden disappearance. Yet another theory points to a possible invasion by a more aggressive civilization. Despite the many theories, the truth remains shrouded in mystery. All we have are remnants of a once thriving civilization, fragments of a lost world that continue to puzzle and fascinate us. What we do know is that the Indus Valley people were a testament to the possibility of a peaceful, organized and advanced society in an era dominated by conflict and chaos. The Indus Valley civilization, a society that vanished leaving us to piece together their story. In the tropical lowlands of Mexico, a civilization emerged that would lay the groundwork for all the Mesoamerican cultures that followed. This was the Olmec civilization, an enigmatic society that thrived from approximately 1400 to 400 BC. The Olmecs were the first complex society in Mesoamerica, predating the Mayans and the Aztecs by many centuries. The Olmecs are perhaps best known for their monumental sculptures, these include the colossal stone heads, some weighing up to 40 tons, with finely detailed facial features that still inspire awe today. These heads are believed to represent Olmec rulers, providing us with a glimpse into their social structure and beliefs. The Olmecs also produce smaller, intricate jade figurines and basalt thrones, demonstrating a remarkable mastery over stone. But the Olmecs were more than just master sculptors. They developed a system of writing, a calendar, and a complex religious structure, all of which would influence the cultures that followed. They were also skilled farmers, cultivating maize, beans, and squash, and they traded extensively with other Mesoamerican societies. Yet despite their considerable achievements, the Olmecs remained shrouded in mystery. Around 400 BC, their civilization suddenly and inexplicably declined. Numerous theories have been proposed to explain their disappearance. Some suggest they were overthrown by other Mesoamerican societies. Others believe environmental changes, such as volcanic activity or a shift in the course of rivers, may have led to their downfall. But the truth remains elusive. Today, the Olmec civilization is remembered primarily through their monumental sculptures, 
silent witnesses to a complex society that, for reasons still unknown, abruptly vanished. The Olmec civilization's legacy, however, endures in the cultures that followed, from the Mayans to the Aztecs, marking them as the first great Mesoamerican civilization. The Olmecs, the first Mesoamerican civilization, mysteriously disappeared, leaving behind only their colossal stone heads. In the heart of the desert, a civilization flourished that turned the harsh landscape into a thriving metropolis. This was the Nabataean civilization, a civilization that emerged around the 4th century BC in the arid regions of modern-day Jordan. Despite the inhospitable environment, the Nabataeans built an empire on the crossroads of major trade routes, their prosperity evident in the breathtaking city of Petra. Petra, the rose-red city, was a marvel of engineering and artistic genius. Carved directly into the cliffs, the city was a testament to the Nabataeans' mastery over their environment. Imagine this, a city complete with intricate temples, tombs and houses, not built from the ground up, but rather sculpted into existence. The centerpiece, the treasury, is a towering facade of intricate carvings, an architectural masterpiece that continues to captivate visitors today. The Nabataeans were not just skilled carvers, they were also pioneers in water management. In a landscape where water was scarce, they developed a complex system of dams, canals and reservoirs to capture and store every precious drop of rain. This ingenuity allowed them to survive and thrive in the desert, transforming it into a bustling metropolis. But what happened to this ingenious civilization? As with many ancient societies, the exact cause of the Nabataeans' decline remains a mystery. Some theories suggest that shifting trade routes led to economic decline. Others point to natural disasters or invasions. The most tangible evidence of their decline, however, is the gradual abandonment of Petra. By the 7th century AD, Petra, once a thriving city, was largely deserted. Over time, the city was forgotten, hidden away in the desert cliffs, only to be rediscovered in the 19th century. Today, Petra stands as a haunting reminder of a civilization that once was, its empty streets echoing with the untold stories of the desert carvers. The Nabataeans, a civilization carved into the cliffs, disappeared, leaving behind a city half as old as time. And while the sands of the desert have swallowed much of their history, the mystery of the Nabataeans continues to captivate us, their legacy etched forever in the rose-red cliffs of Petra. In the land of Hellas, a civilization emerged that would lay the foundation for Western civilization. This is the tale of the mighty Mycenaeans, the first Greeks. Emerging around 1600 BC, they dominated the Aegean Sea and beyond, establishing trading routes as far as Egypt and Mesopotamia. Their society was centered around fortified palatial centers, from which they controlled surrounding territories. These palaces were not only administrative hubs, but also cultural and religious centers, decorated with frescoes depicting scenes of war, hunting, and religious ceremonies. The Mycenaean civilization was defined by a warrior ethos. Their leaders, known as Wanaks, were both warriors and priests, and their society was marked by a hierarchy of power and wealth. The Mycenaeans were also skilled artisans, producing intricate gold jewelry, pottery and weapons, many of which have been found in their grand tombs, such as the famous Grave Circle A at Mycenae. As for their written language, Linear B, it's the earliest form of Greek that we know of. Yet it remained a mystery until the mid-20th century when it was finally deciphered, revealing a wealth of information about their society, economy and religion. But around 1200 BC, the Mycenaean civilization began to decline. Their palaces were destroyed, their power diminished, and their people scattered. Theories about their collapse abound. Some suggest invasions by sea peoples, Others point to internal strife, economic instability, or natural disasters like earthquakes. Yet the truth remains elusive. In the centuries that followed, Greece entered a dark age. The art of writing was lost, large settlements were abandoned, and the population dwindled. Yet, out of this darkness, the classical Greek civilization would eventually emerge, carrying with them the legacy of their Mycenaean ancestors. The Mycenaeans, Ancestors of the Greeks faded into the pages of history, their palaces and tombs a reminder of their past glory. But their impact on Western civilization, in art, 
culture, politics, and thought remains undeniable. Indeed, in the shadows of their ruined palaces, the spirit of the first Greeks still echoes. These ancient civilizations, though they have vanished, continue to fascinate us with their mysteries. In the heart of the ocean, the fabled city of Atlantis remains an enigma, its once vibrant society and advanced technology leaving us to ponder its sudden disappearance. Then, there were the masters of the jungle who left behind an intricate network of cities and temples, only to be swallowed by the dense foliage of time. The builders of the cliffs, who took to the heights, creating architectural marvels of precision and ingenuity, vanished, leaving no record of their departure. And let us not forget the first Europeans, whose civilization faded into the misty pages of history, their unique culture and customs lost, yet their influence still palpable. The temple builders, who erected monumental structures dedicated to their deities, left behind a legacy of spiritual and architectural significance, their disappearance as sudden and mysterious as their grand creations. The peaceful people, known for their harmonious society and advanced agricultural techniques, faded away, leaving us intrigued about their peaceful coexistence with nature. The first Mesoamericans, the pioneers of civilization in the Americas, vanished without a trace, their ingenious calendar system and hieroglyphic writing serving as silent witnesses to their former glory. The carvers of the desert, who transformed barren landscapes into intricate works of art, disappeared, leaving behind a canvas of enigma and wonder. The first Greeks, the torchbearers of democracy and philosophy, vanished, their profound contributions to human thought still echoing in our modern society. Each of these civilizations, though long gone, have left indelible marks on human history, their stories etched in the sands of time. Their disappearance, while perplexing, underscores the impermanence of human existence and the enduring power of nature. Studying these lost civilizations not only helps us understand our past, but also provides invaluable lessons for our present and future. As we delve into the past, we uncover more questions than answers, but perhaps that is the enduring allure of these lost civilizations.
Picture a city of immense wealth and advanced technology now submerged and lost beneath the ocean waves. Welcome to the legendary city of Atlantis. This fabled metropolis first entered our collective consciousness through the writings of the ancient Greek philosopher, Plato. In his dialogues Timaeus and Critias, Plato described Atlantis as a powerful and advanced kingdom that sank in a night and a day into the ocean around 9,000 years before his own time. But where was this city of legend located? Over the centuries, theories have abounded. Some suggest the Mediterranean, others the Caribbean, while a few even propose the icy wilderness of Antarctica. Each theory is as intriguing as the last, yet none have yielded the definitive proof we yearn for. The tale of Atlantis is not just a story, it's a puzzle, a riddle wrapped in the enigma of our past. Scholars, explorers and dreamers have embarked on countless quests in search of its remains. From deep sea dives to satellite imagery, every conceivable method has been employed, yet the city remains elusive. No artifacts, no ruins, no concrete evidence has surfaced to prove Atlantis was more than a figment of Plato's philosophical imaginings. Yet the lack of proof has done little to dampen our fascination. The city of Atlantis, whether real or imagined, represents a longing for discovery and a thirst for understanding our history. It embodies the human penchant for mystery and the unknown. It serves as a symbol of our unending quest for knowledge, a testament to our refusal to accept that some things may remain forever hidden. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the allure of Atlantis continues to captivate us, a testament to the enduring mystery of lost cities. From beneath the ash and pumice, a city frozen in time emerged. This is the tale of Pompeii, a city lost and found. In the shadow of the mighty Mount Vesuvius, Pompeii was once a thriving city, a jewel of the Roman Empire, a city of culture, commerce and grandeur, home to about 20,000 inhabitants. But in the year 79 AD, the looming Vesuvius erupted, spewing forth a deadly rain of ash, pumice and molten rock. Within a mere 24 hours, this bustling city was buried beneath up to 20 feet of volcanic debris. Pompeii, in all its glory, was lost to the world its people frozen in their final moments. This catastrophic event, which extinguished the very life of the city, ironically became its preserver, encasing it in a deadly shroud, preserving a snapshot of Roman life in a chillingly intimate detail. Fast forward to the 16th century. As workers were digging an underground channel to divert the River Sarno, they stumbled upon something extraordinary, remnants of a city lost in time. This was the accidental rediscovery of Pompeii. The archaeological treasures unearthed at Pompeii are staggering. They include grand villas, temples, theatres and frescoes that provide a vivid picture of Roman lifestyle and culture. Even the volcanic casts of the victims, forever immortalised in their final moments, offer a hauntingly poignant glimpse of the human tragedy that befell Pompeii, be told. High in the Andean peaks, shrouded by clouds and mystery, lies the lost Incan city of Machu Picchu. Tucked away in the verdant folds of the Peruvian Andes, this majestic city is an echo from a bygone era. Built in the 15th century during the reign of the Inca Empire, Machu Picchu is a testament to the grandeur of a civilization that once thrived here. Its intricate stone walls, terraces, temples and plazas exhibit a mastery of architecture and masonry that is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Yet the city was not destined to endure. A mere century after its construction, Machu Picchu was abandoned, its inhabitants disappearing as mysteriously as the city had appeared. The city lay dormant, its secrets concealed under the cloak of the dense Andean forest. Fast forward to 1911, an adventurous American explorer, Hiram Bingham, stumbled upon this hidden gem. Guided by local farmers, Bingham uncovered the overgrown ruins, revealing to the world a city lost in time. With every stone turned, every path explored, the enigma of Machu Picchu deepened. The city's original purpose and use remain a conundrum. Some suggest it was a royal estate or a sacred religious site. Others propose it was a strategic military outpost or a refuge for the Inca elite. The truth, it seems, is as elusive as the wisps of fog that often veil the city. Despite extensive archaeological efforts and countless studies, the full story of Machu Picchu remains untold. Its silence speaks volumes about the people who once roamed its streets, their lives, their culture, their fate. 
Each unanswered question adds another layer to the city's mystique, making it a tantalizing puzzle for historians and archaeologists alike. Machu Picchu, the city in the clouds, remains a symbol of the Inca Empire's grandeur and an enigma waiting to be fully unraveled. Each stone, each terrace, each silent plaza whispers of a past waiting to be discovered, a mystery waiting to be solved. In the heart of the Cambodian jungle, the sprawling metropolis of Angkor was once the center of the Khmer Empire. This grand city, a marvel of architecture and engineering, was at its peak in the 12th century, a beacon of civilization in a world largely untouched. Angkor was the jewel of the Khmer Empire, a testament to its power and prosperity. The city was home to an estimated one million inhabitants, making it one of the most populous pre-industrial urban centers. Its most striking feature is the Temple of Angkor Wat, an architectural masterpiece of intricate carvings and towering spires that still captivates visitors today. But even the greatest empires crumble. In the 15th century, Angkor was mysteriously abandoned. Its impressive temples, palaces and structures were gradually swallowed by the relentless jungle, leaving behind a ghost city, its glory hidden under a shroud of green. Then in the 19th century, Angkor was rediscovered. French explorer Henri Mouho stumbled upon the city in 1860 and his accounts of the ancient metropolis sparked interest around the world. Since then, archaeologists and historians have been meticulously working to uncover, conserve and understand this vast archaeological site. Despite the ravages of time and nature, Angkor has not given up all of its secrets. Every stone, every carving, every monument holds a story waiting to be told. The site is a complex puzzle, a labyrinth of clues that reveal insights into the Khmer Empire's culture, religion and everyday life. However, the conservation of Angkor is an ongoing challenge. The encroaching jungle, the harsh climate and the passage of time all threaten the stability of the structures. Despite these challenges, dedicated teams of archaeologists and conservationists are committed to preserving this remarkable testament to human ingenuity and resilience. Angkor stands as a monument to a forgotten empire, its silent stones whispering tales of glory and decline. This hidden metropolis, once lost and now found, continues to captivate and intrigue, a poignant reminder of the ebb and flow of civilizations. From Atlantis to Angkor, the stories of lost cities echo with mystery, tragedy and human resilience. These enigmatic places, once bustling with life, now lie silent, their stories etched in stone and buried deep beneath the sands of time. We journeyed through the mythical city of Atlantis, a civilization alleged to have been swallowed by the sea. Its existence, or lack thereof, has puzzled thinkers and explorers for over two millennia. Yet the allure of such an advanced society lost to the depths keeps our curiosity piqued and our imaginations ignited. We then walked the cobbled streets of Pompeii, frozen in a moment of destruction. This city, once lost beneath a torrent of volcanic ash, now stands as a poignant reminder of the power of nature and the fragility of human life. Through archaeology, we've unearthed a city so well preserved, it offers a vivid window into the life of an ancient Roman city. Our journey took us higher to the cloud-shrouded peaks of the Andes where the mystery of Machu Picchu unfolded. This Incan citadel, hidden from the world for centuries, remains an enigma. Its purpose, its people and its abandonment the answers to these questions tantalize us, drawing us ever closer to understanding our ancestors. Finally, we ventured into the lush jungles of Cambodia, where the hidden metropolis of Angkor emerged. Once the largest city in the world, Angkor's monumental temples reveal a civilization of astounding complexity and grandeur. Its rediscovery has opened an extraordinary chapter in our understanding of Southeast Asian history. The allure of lost cities lies not just in their mystery, but in their ability to connect us to our shared human past. Each discovery, each artifact unearthed, each story told, brings us closer to understanding who we are and where we come from. As we continue to dig deeper into our past, who knows what lost cities await discovery in the sands of time.